Hi guys, welcome back. Year 2020 is more fascinating year, at least for the automation testing tools maturity. We have been seeing these automation testing tools which is coming to the market right now are getting more and more mature these days. As you can see, there is not a lot of breakthrough happened in the testing itself. Like we are not really testing an application which is based on machine learning or artificial intelligence or maybe like Facebook's Oculus Rift, something like that. We're not testing all those VR, AR or cloud-based artificial intelligence, ML kind of applications yet. We have been testing these classical web-based application for all these days or maybe mobile-based application or maybe microservices-based sort of application like that. But that's not a big deal. I mean, we have been testing these applications or these sort of applications for a pretty long time with the automation testing tools that we have got. And we have been seeing that these testing tools are still trying to catch up with the application's new launch. Like if React launches, then the automation testing tool is still catching up. And if any uh, maybe Angular application launches, then the framework has to be supported by other testing tools. Like Protractor was some of the example that we could see that Protractor easily support Angular application and that's why we were all using Protractor for automating an Angular based application. While React came, Cypress was very much helpful and then Vue.js and React and all those applications are right now more supported with the Puppeteer or maybe Playwright of that matter. So these kind of automation testing tools are kind of catching up with the UI based framework and that's what we have been doing all these days. And it's happening for a long time right now. But this year, I would say for year 2020, the automation testing tool is kind of getting matured in terms of the number of features that it can give us. For example, if you could see the Cypress was not supporting the cross browser testing before, but now it does. And similarly, test project now supports artificial intelligence for that matter. I mean, they're not trying to uh, completely automate everything using artificial intelligence, but their artificial intelligence enabled feature helps us to identify some of the elements which are kind of breaking kind of things. And similarly, you can see that Playwright, one of the tools of the Puppeteer is also now with Microsoft and they are kind of developing something very, very awesome as well. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the great feature which the Playwright is offering for the community. I mean, it's all free and we all know that we have been talking about this Playwright and uh, Puppeteer for a long time. And I've also released a course in Udemy with Playwright, Puppeteer, and also one of the most fascinating rapper, the Cordcept JS. All these kind of things we have already covered in that course. If you already not uh, saw that course, you can probably go ahead and check in the link below over here. But yes, this is the thing. I mean, these tools, the JavaScript based tools are kind of getting evolved these days and the Puppeteer or Cypress or Playwright, these tools are also improving in terms of the features which the customers or the community is actually looking for. So in that case, this new feature which the Playwright has offered to the community is really, really fascinating. And one of the most important features that we are going to talk about in this video is Playwright CLI. So the Playwright CLI is really, really fantastic because all you're going to do is once you start the Playwright CLI, you can then debug the Playwright and then you can also record the Playwright code pretty much like the Selenium recorder. And also you can see that you can perform a lot of console based debugging, identifying the element from that particular uh, UI element and all this jazz. It's all supported in the Playwright CLI. And the next thing is the video support. I mean, now like how Cypress does the out of the box support of the video recording of your execution. The same thing is now supported with the Playwright as well. This is also one of the most exciting feature just released. It's an experimental feature right now, but it looks pretty promising in terms of the size that it generates the video itself. It's very, very small footprint and it is really cool. So all these things that we'll be discussing in this particular video. So let's jump into my machine and see how these things works. All right, so let's get started. All right, so now I'm in front of my machine and I'm gonna show you how the latest changes of the Playwright, which is created by the team, are gonna look like. As you can see over here in this particular uh, screen, the Playwright CLI is now public, which means it was in a beta stage before and now it is currently available for public to use. And it is really, really awesome because this is one of the feature which I really like because it saves a lot of time. And if you go to the Playwright CLI itself, you can see that this utility tool for Playwright 
can help you to generate the code. It also opens the page in Chrome, Firefox, or WebKit, which is Safari on all the platforms, and emulates the devices, like color schemes, geolocations, and all those stuffs. Along with that, it also inspects the selectors, which is pretty cool because using the Playwrights Dev Tool API to inspect the selector is one of the most exciting thing as well. And also, it generates page screenshots and PDF, which is one of the embedded feature of the Playwright and the uh, Puppeteer itself for a pretty long time. And again, those things are available in this Playwright CLI as well. So we are going to try out and see what's going to look like and things like of that nature. So for that, I'm going to go to my Udemy course, which I have already talked about a lot of things about, as you can see over here, that there are a detailed section of the Puppeteer itself from the complete ground up. And then we have the Playwright, which is next to the Puppeteer. We talked about it and we have created a lot of contents on that. And I'm just going to download this particular content, the Playwright, uh, the Udemy Playwright.zip. And this has all the you know, code which is required for us to uh, get started today. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the item terminal and then I'm just going to navigate to the uh, downloads folder. And then from there, we are going to also navigate to the uh, Udemy uh, Playwright where I'm just going to open the Visual Studio code. So in here, we are going to use the latest version of the Playwright because I guess while I released this particular uh, uh, course with the Playwright support, it was actually one of the new tool by then which was released. It was not even matured by then, but now I guess it is uh, totally matured and all those stuff. So we can see how it's gonna look like. And you can see that this is the code which I was talking about. It's kind of pretty old and you can see that the Playwright is now in version 1.04. But the actual version today, if you're just going to uh, hit this uh, double course, and then if you just do a control space, you can see that the latest version is 1.4.1. .1. So this is the version which we are going to be using and we'll quickly see uh, how the other feature which I was talking about, the Playwright CLI is also going to look like. So I'm also going to install the Playwright uh, CLI over here so that you can see both of them, the new feature of the recording video as well as the CLI together in one shot. So I'm just going to install this as well, this new tool and we'll see how it's going to look like. So I'm just going to uh, do a control uh, Windows S or whatever uh, platform that you're using. And I'm just going to open the uh, terminal. And over here, I'm actually going to uh, do an NPM uh, install. So this way it is going to install all the required packages for us. Uh, so you can see that the NPM install has already downloaded all the versions for us, uh, the playwrights and stuff. The playwright CLI is also available right now. So this is the cool thing. I mean, once you have all these things in place, now it is very, very easy for you to start using this playwright CLI. Well, as I said, I'm going to start using the playwright CLI itself and we'll see how it actually works. So the first thing, as you can see in the documentation itself over here on the Microsoft's uh, web, uh, GitHub, the playwright.cli, it says that run the NPX playwright CLI of help, which is going to show you all the help features. But the playwright uh, CLI also has what is called as the code gen and just give this particular wikipedia.org, then it is going to generate the code for the Wikipedia ORG itself, which is pretty cool. I mean, I'm not going to use this Wikipedia because we already have a site called as eaapp.swami.com and this is the site which we have been using for many different uh, testing purposes like testing uh, the automation framework development with Selenium C Sharp course and automation framework development with Selenium Java course and even Cypress and many different courses I have used this same tool. Uh, so this is the same website which I'm going to be using as well this time and we'll see how it actually going to work. So for that, I'm actually going to do this, uh, which is going to be the npx playwright code gen. Uh, so I'm just going to do this npx uh, playwright CLI of the uh, code gen, which is going to generate the code for us. And then I'm just going to use the http colon double slash eaapp.swami.com. So once I do that, you can see that instantly it is going to spawn the Chrome browser for us over here. And you can see that guys, now we are actually going to do a record from this itself. So once you can see that once I hover here, it's also going to tell us this, this is the text of login, which is pretty cool. And once I click this particular login, it's also going to uh, show me uh, the input type over here. So once I enter 
the username as admin you can see that the code is actually generating behind the scene like whatever operation that you're going to be performing the code is also generating for you behind the scene which is pretty cool i mean this is more like a verbose way of recording all those operations for you and this saves a lot of time for you as well and once i just do like uh, entering the password and once i hit login it's gonna log in for us and then i can go to the employee list page and let's say if I'm going to create an user, something like as Adam, probably, and his salary and his duration worked and his grade and Adam uh, at uh, gmail.com, whatever it is. And once I create it, you can see that it's going to create an user for us. Uh, if I just scroll over here, it shows us the user being created. And once I hit this uh, delete, and once I go for the delete operation, it's going to delete the user for us. Pretty cool. And then I'm just going to do a log off. So all these operations that I did right now on this particular browser is all recorded. And once I close this particular browser, it also closed the particular session for us. So you can see that the whole recording that I did, the, all the operation which I did, is now being recorded for us over here, which is pretty cool. And now what I can do is I can just grab all the generated code something like these uh, over here i'm gonna copy this and if i go to the uh, project over here maybe over here and like that and i'm gonna see ea app dot uh, ea app test dot js and i'm gonna paste all the code that i've just copied and you can see that this code right now, it is pretty much exactly the same code that I was talking about, guys. This is the same thing that we discussed a lot in this whole course. I mean, the Udemy course that I created from the complete basic to the advanced level. But over here, now everything is automatically generated for us. So if you have seen the particular course, you will understand this thing very, very easily because it's all coming for us automatically. And once I hit this page dot, you can see that the intelligence also shows us all the different methods which is required for performing a particular operation, which is pretty cool. And now uh, I know that this test, if I run it, it's going to be uh, not running for you very perfectly because you need to do a scroll to the atom and then you can click this delete. But at least it will run right now. So if I just do to run this like like that, uh, EA app test.js. So once I execute this, so you can see that it opens up the browser for us and then it's going to enter the username and password. It's entered this value so quickly. And once I scroll, basically, it's actually going to delete that as well, which is pretty cool. So now everything has happened for us pretty instantly, very, very easily for us using this particular uh, Playwright CLI tool. And this is some of the most extendable thing which I was talking about. Again, there is something called as a uh, Playwright extending tool, which I already talked about. I mean, the Puppeteer extending tool, which uh, a community guy has created, which is available in the course itself. I talked about it, which is something, as I told you before, this Playwright or Puppeteer, whatever that you use, is highly extendable, pretty much like Selenium. And it also cross browser support and it has many different modern tooling support, which is available pretty much like in Selenium is also available in uh, the Puppeteer and Playwright itself. That is one of the coolest thing which I really, really like about. And the next feature which I was talking about because we are talking a lot uh, just to save our time. The next feature is uh, the video feature itself. So this is the record videos for whatever that you are actually performing an operation. This experimental feature is actually very, very handy if you want to grab a video for an operation that you're recording. I mean, you can delete it once the testing is done, uh, maybe for some time, after some time, because the footprint of this video is also very, very small. So you can see that this is the one. I mean, you need to give the directory once you open the Chrome or Firefox or WebKit while you launch it. And then you're gonna uh, give the context with the downscaled uh, version of this particular uh, of the UI itself. So if you go over here after the headless, you're gonna give the uh, video path like that, which is gonna be your directory name. I mean, the current directory name that you're executing. So that's when the directory name comes in. Uh, so once this is done, on the context, you can also give the 
record videos with itself i mean you need to be in the latest version as i told you if you don't really are in the 1.4.1 then probably you don't see this particular uh, uh, options coming in for you so make sure that you update your playwright to the latest version so that you can see all these things coming through so once this is done and you can see that i will show you the magic pretty quickly once i run this particular test it is not only going to run the test for us but it also going to do a video recording for us and then it is gonna play for us i mean very instantly so i actually uh, grabbed this guy for us and once i stop this uh, you can see that there is a webm dot uh, web dot i mean dot webm file being created for us and now if i just go to uh, this particular directory so open or reveal in finder uh, you can see that there is a webm file coming through and once i double click this you can see that the video is also generated for us. I mean, I can play this particular video uh, if I'm not wrong. Oops. Why is it not playing? It should play, basically. Ah, it says zero uh, MB. Uh, maybe I need to run this test once again. I'm not sure at all. It should be executing because while I tried it, it was working fine without any problem. But now, for some reason, it is not, uh, which is okay. All right, and now coming back, you can see that this time it shows 192 KB. I'm not sure why the first time it didn't came through, uh, but it should be working fine. So you can see that this time it shows the videos for us and it just enters all the value, deletes the operations for us and everything comes through. So this is the thing. I mean, these two new features was kind of eye catching, which was not there before in the uh, playwright or uh, in the puppeteer. But now these features are coming through, which is pretty awesome. And I guess this feature is also going to envy you to go through uh, to go to the uh, Playwright platform for automation testing pretty quickly. But I would really say that after Selenium, this tool is fascinating because it is highly extendable and it's kind of very, very close to a realistic automation testing tool. So just tell me your thoughts and what do you think about this tool and what do you think about this feature itself. And once again, thank you for watching this video and have a great weekend.